You are listening to a Pod Bros exclusive. <laughs> Hey now, everybody, we're back. Brand new episode of Take Aim Outdoors, and super excited to have this guy back. Baker Levitt from Kill Cliff. Baker, it's been a while, man. What are you up to? No, just sitting here in Seattle, staring out the window, waiting for Friday. Tur- turkey season opens uh, Friday morning, so I'm just sitting here, you know, waiting, biding my time until it's time to head east. I know that's uh, it's that time of year in spring. And I know everybody gets excited about, you know, sunlight and the flowers. I get excited about turkey season. I don't know about you. Oh, it's – aside from duck hunting, it is my, – it's my favorite thing. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, I don't – it's tough, like, you know, when a, a turkey hunt lines up just right and, you know, Gawa comes in and they're fighting in front of you and all that stuff. I mean, it's hard to beat that. It really is. It's, uh, it's my, one of my favorite things in the world to do. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I know you're a big waterfowl guy. So what do you, what, what is it about turkey hunting that uh, you sort of gravitate to? Is it because you can call as well, like just some yeah, you, sort of? You interact with the uh, with with the with the birds, and you know you getting a gobbler. Just that that first gobble you hear, you know, when they're still in the roost. To I me, mean, it just absolutely sends chills down my spine. All the hair on your neck stands up, and it's just it's unbelievable, you know, because it's it's a courtship. You know you're the you're you know you're talking and they're gobbling back and you're you're basically reverse engineering nature where normally the hen goes to the gobbler but you know turkey hunting you're tricking it to where the gobblers come and looking for the hen and you know it's just they come in they're gobbling and strutting and spitting and drumming and all that stuff man I just it's it just gets me fired up and they're just such a beautiful beautiful creature you know colors and feathers and all that stuff i just it's my favorite thing i love them it is it's really neat they're uh definitely in my opinion the big game kind of animal of the bird you know they're you know can be as tall as your waist and just everything about them is so unique you know they're not they don't look like any other bird and and definitely like you said the colors are just unique you know you can call in three or four gobblers and one will have a red head, one will have a white head, one will be sky blue. I mean, it's super unique to just experience, you know, a turkey hunt. Yeah, they're unbelievable. Oh, man, when you get them coming in looking for a fight, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. Especially because I like to hunt over a, a I use Dave Smith decoys, so I hunt over a, a hen and a jake. And getting them to come in and just jump on that jake and just go to town on that, man, I mean, it's just... It's unbelievable. It gets me fired up. So your opening day in Washington is Friday. So run me through, Baker, what you're going to do Friday morning. Let's pretend we're on the hunt. So give me the rundown on on everything you're going to do from getting gear to waking up at 5 a.m. to, you know, putting those decoys out. So get there, you know, an hour before sunlight, get set up, and, you know, I, I like to hunt out of a blind, uh, you know, because I, I like to bow hunt turkeys. So, you know, get the blind set up in a good spot, get nice and quiet, you know, get the cameras, you know, the GoPros and stuff up and running, and then just let that first little cluck out, you know, just a little cluck, and just wait for that gobble. Ooh, and then just sit and wait, patient, pay attention, and keep your eyes and ears peeled, and, you know, just do the dance, man, just talk to them. So Dave Smith decoys, use a double bull blind. Uh, I'll take my bow with me. And uh, I like to use it. I also like to hunt a blind because I like a slate call, and it's just easier to, you know, I'm not the most quiet, still hunter in the world. So, you know, the blind allows me to kind of relax and be myself and move around a little bit and use the slate, which I prefer over the mouth call and a box call. Do you uh... – so you got this farm you're going to hunt on Friday. So do we have birds picked out? Do you know where they like to roost, or what's the scenario there? Yeah, well, all that's got all that on lock. Um, got, the property's dialed. The guy that owns it is a big-time bow hunter and is not a fan of turkeys. Uh, he just likes to hunt uh, deer there. So 
I'm doing him a favor if he's got everything patterned. Um, you know, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Cannot wait. So what is a piece of ground that you're hunting on in eastern Washington? What does that look like? I'm it's, it's, a little it's, picture. it's hilly. It's very hilly. So what I'll do is, you know, hunt out of the blind that morning. And then, you know, midday, just get out and kind of, you know, run and gun and take a a, a, a Jake fan, you know. And I'll, I'd like to, ideally, I'd like to get one with the bow out of the blind and then um, around noon when it gets warm, you know, run and gun and take that uh, Jake fan and kind of fan, try to try to get eyes on the bird and then fan him in, get him to charge and then take one with a shotgun. Gotcha. So, how many birds are you guys allowed in Washington? Three. Three. But where? Okay. But it's but where we'll be? It's only only allowed two. So you can take um, two in this county, and then uh, the third bird has to be in a different part of the state. Okay. Now, I know that uh, some states have crazy rules. You can only hunt till noon, or you can only shoot one bird per <laughs> tick. Per day, so what are you looking at in Washington as far as that's all goes? Uh, sunrise to sunset, and then you can take two in a day. So um, that'll be the plan. And I'd like to get, I'll have a buddy with me, so, you know, ideally the plan would be to get, you know, four birds in two days. I don't know if it's possible. Anything's possible, hopefully, that, but that's the plan. I'm and then sure next it is. Wednesday, I mean, and then next uh, Wednesday, we'll be down in Alabama and then we'll hunt Thursday and Friday for Easterns and we'll do some turkey hunting and hog hunting there. Now you guys have merriments. So is there uh, anything in your head you're kind of putting together a game plan to switch from that type of bird over to Eastern? Nope. Nope. It's the exact same. Hunt them the same way. Now I sort of know the guy you're going to hunt with in Bama. And yep. he said, I don't know if it's true, but your your double bull is going to be behind like a wood pile facing a telephone pole. Have you heard Basically. any of it? Yeah. yeah. That's what I, <laughs> yeah. He does that's not right. like hunting out of blinds. I do. I love it. I mean, I just, you know, I like the bow hunt and, you know, I just, I like the blinds. I like it, especially when it gets warm, you know, because I live in Seattle and it's, you know, always chilly up here and wet and just sitting in that blind and it gets nice and warm in there and you can, you know do whatever you want to do, move a little bit and all that stuff. I, now, I haven't even thought of that, Baker. I, I I haven't asked Brian, but I assume it's already like 80 degrees down there in Bama. It's been actually cool. It was 47 in, uh, this past weekend in the morning, you know, so hopefully I think it's warming up now, though, so that'll be good, good for us. And then so we'll hunt Thursday and Friday in Alabama, and then I'll hunt Saturday and Sunday uh, in Georgia. Um, which will be, I'm excited about that too. That is cool. That is, uh, that's your home state, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. So I live in Washington correct. state now in Seattle and then Georgia's home. So, I mean, it would be just jam up if I could, you know, get birds in Washington this weekend, Alabama next week, and then Georgia next weekend. So, I mean, that would be, That'd be awesome. Three birds in in the span of seven days would be amazing. Three birds, or three different states in the span in the span of a week. Now I I'm a big fan of uh, eating wild turkey, and I, don't, I know a lot of people that yeah. a lot of people are kind of on the fence of that. But I, I love to debreast them and and play them, grill them, or you know, crock pot. Is there anything you like to do as far as uh, eating those birds? Fillet them season them, and then green egg, put them on the green egg, get the breasts out. And then with the legs, you know, I like to take the legs and put those in a crock pot. Yeah, I've never done that with legs. I, the legs I don't really mess with. I, I've never had a good experience with the legs on a wild turkey. Try the thighs and put it in a crock pot, um, and uh, I think you'll be pleased. It's a darker meat. It's really good. Right. It's definitely dark for me. So what do you do in the crock pot? Are you throwing, you know, like a roast veggie type of stuff or? Yeah, just vegetables, broth. You know, I like to put a beef broth in there. Uh, throw some vegetables, potatoes, um, garlic, you know, just 
throw everything with the kitchen sink in there. Absolutely. Sounds good. Now, are you guys uh, going to do some uh, hog hunting when you're done with Brian and Bama? We are. We're going to be doing some hog hunting, and we're also going to do some hog hunting at night with thermals. We're going to say that again with who? With thermals, night vision. Oh, okay. All right. You, yeah, that's you guys doing awesome. that with Brian as well, or are you going somewhere else? No, with Brian as well. Okay. Yeah, there's, All right. there's, he's got two properties down there, and the second property is just eaten up with hogs. They're all over the place. So, um, you know, we'll get down. I shot. We were down there this fall, and I shot a nice little. We called a suitcase pig. Um, but hopefully, we can get on some bigger, you know, swine. So that's one of my favorite things too is hog hunting. I absolutely love hog hunting. It is so much fun. Now, explain that a little bit to me because I've never done the whole thermal stuff. So, are, I mean, what are you looking at as far as, as that goes, Baker? So you have uh, you run them on ARs, assault rifles, and you've got thermals, uh, thermal optics. So, you know, they're nocturnal. They're always out feeding in the field at night. And so you just basically spot them and then just kind of sneak up on them slowly and quietly. And when you get close enough, just let her rip. So it's like a spot and stalk at night, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, it's fun. Dude, it, it's a rush. I mean, it's unbelievable. Because, like, when you, at night and you look out in the fields, you know, there's just tons of them out there. You know, like, they're just everywhere. And um, you just kind of sneak up quietly, make sure the wind's right, and just walk really quietly. You can walk up to 10 feet from them. Because they make so much noise when they're feeding, especially when they're not alert. They're just going to town and rooting and snorting and all that stuff. So when you're looking through that thermal lens, like you, you can tell exactly, like you can put it right behind the shoulder. Or, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a green orb. I mean, it, you can see it clear as day. Okay. It's a glowing green pig. I mean, you can see it clear as day. Well, that, that'd be cool if you uh, got some piggy meat on the way to a turkey oh, yeah. hunt as well. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, that's kind of like a... You know, an Alabama or Georgia slam, you get a turkey, a hog, and a deer. But deer, obviously, out of season. And there is no right. season on hogs. I mean, they're they're a nuisance, so they want them eradicated. Yeah, they do. I know, there's not enough of it going on. Everybody kind of needs to get on board and start shooting these things. Yeah, and don't be selective. You know, it just don't don't go for the big ones or the small ones. Just go for the pigs. Just shoot them. Every one of them you can find. You can get your hands on. Yeah, no, I agree. So what? What's your game plan in, in Georgia, and, and how many birds are you guys allowed down there? Georgia is three. Uh, we'll hunt sunrise, uh, sunset, and uh, we'll do that Saturday and Sunday. And then middle of the day, we'll just kind of scout around and run and gun and try and fan, some, fan one in. If we can put eyes on a bird, you know, a, a dominant gobbler, just, you know, you get on your all fours and crawl into a field behind with a Jake fan in front of you. And they see it, and they come charging up to you and try and fight you. So you shoot them from five to six feet. What? Really? Yeah, you've never heard of that? No. Oh, my. Are you serious? No, I'm teasing. I have. But yeah, I, 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 I was just kind of compl- contemplating your manhood. I, I I wasn't sure you were ready to do something like that. Oh, poor. Yeah, I shot I got two with one shot the year before last in Nebraska. I mean, it's. It's as fun as it gets. I mean, I've been on, I've been with, I've seen a dozen birds taken, being fanned in. I mean, they, they come in like crazy. If you get their attention and it's a dominant bird and it sees that fan, it does not hesitate. It comes charging over. No, it is pretty neat. I've always wanted to do it. I just haven't, uh, haven't gotten one. I like, uh, I forget who makes it, but, you know, one that you basically, it will attach right to the barrel of your gun. And you can walk right in on them. Have you seen those videos, Baker? Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's called reaping. I don't like to. Attack. I just like to hold the fan in front of me, um, and they see it and just come charging in. You're on all fours, and you drop the fan, and pop up with your gun, and let it rip. So in Georgia, I think of uh, I don't know what part, but I, I just think of like ponderosa pine. So what what kind of habitat? It's in, in pine. Landscape? Yeah, we'll be hunting pines and uh, and uh, food plots. Um, so hopefully by next weekend they'll be coming out in the fields more. 
and, you know, we'll set up on the edge of a field and, you know, get some calls and get a gobbler to respond and come charging in. And then in the middle of the day when the, you know, when the sun comes out, you know, it's warm and getting hot, and they're, you know, kind of strutting around. That's when you kind of creep around, trying to put eyes on one, and then you see one, you just kind of drop down with the um, tail fan in front of your face, and they see it and come charging over. It is, it is a rush, absolute rush. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Now, do you guys ever hog hunt in Georgia as well? What's that? Do you guys hog hunt ever in Georgia as well? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, all the time. I've shot got 100-plus hogs in Georgia in my life. Yeah, what's the game plan there? Do they do them with, with dogs, or do you do the same thing, no. nighttime hunting? No. I mean, it's just in Georgia, it's, uh, it's just been like still hunting, you know, or just kind of spot and stalk, just kind of cruising around. And then um, I won't be doing any hog hunting. Where 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 we will be turkey hunting next weekend in Georgia, there are no hogs. They've eradicated them. Like, it's a heavily managed deer uh, property, and, you know, they've gotten rid of all the hogs. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know that was possible to get rid of hogs once they kind of took over a place. Oh, yeah, no. If it's, if it's heavily managed, I mean, they – the place we're going, I mean, they manage the heck out of it. And, like, if there was a hog – spotted they would cease all operations and and go out and not stop till every hog was off the property yeah i would assume that's the only way to do it you would you would have to be on that game all the time to stop the hogs because it's yeah i mean running trail cams and stuff and traps and all that stuff but yeah there's no there are no hogs where we'll be uh next weekend in georgia that's cool so is there anything else you got going after georgia or is that that complete Um, your uh, spring turkey slam uh, no, bear. I'm going to do some bear hunting in Idaho um, when I get back in May. Probably the first week of May, I'll be, you know, trying to get a black bear in Idaho. And that's a cool hunt. So did you have to do a draw to get that tag? For no, it's over bear? the counter in Idaho. Um, and then also I've got a turkey hunt scheduled uh, down in Oregon, Um a buddy of mine has a place down there. Uh, it's actually a vineyard, and they're just overrun with turkeys. And, you know, it's interesting. Out west, you know, turkey hunting is not really popular. Like, everyone out here chases big game. They don't chase the uh, the turkeys that much. So, <clears throat> you know, it's like you ask people, like, hey, do you do any turkey hunting? They're like, no, not at all. They're like, they're everywhere. And I was like, well, let's still find them. He's like, you know, his girlfriend works at a vineyard, and we got permission to go down there and hunt that, and they're just all over the place down there. So that should be fun, too. That should be a lot of fun. I mean, I would assume just the amount of, uh, you know, pokes that turkeys can hatch every year that, I mean, turkeys could get out of control pretty quick without any kind of predation on them. Yeah, and they don't, like like I said, like they're not a big, turkey hunting's not big out west. I mean, out in the in the northwest. They just, I don't know why people just don't chase them. I think they're crazy. That is crazy. That's too bad, man. That's so much fun. There's something to do in the spring. You know, I mean, yeah, uh, when are you turkey hunting? Say that again. What's the schedule for turkey hunting? What's mine? Yeah, when do you turkey hunt? Uh, we start Monday, the 18th this year, and then uh, it's a two week season, basically. It goes to May 1st, and then you, you which is really kind of screwed up but they have an early season which i i got the tag for they have a late season which is all of may so i don't understand why michigan does it on a monday and then you only have two weeks to hunt but that's the way they do it i like to do the early season just because i'm not a fan of of hunting turkeys in the heat in the midday so i always do the early season just a play on the weather weather so to speak so i can just enjoy enjoy a you know 40 degree day and and have fun while i'm out there but uh i've been doing some scouting and the turkeys are just they're 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 pretty ready they're pretty vocal right now they're starting to strut in every cut field so it's pretty exciting time do you have a bird picked out of a spot you want to hunt i got two spots i'm gonna hunt um i don't per se have a bird picked out because each bird i've seen it they've almost all been the same same bird, same 10-inch beard, 11-inch beard, same age. So um, it's, it's basically the first one that 
pulls the deli ticket, it's going to get it. I like there's really no such thing as like a trophy turkey hunt. As long as it's not a Jake, it's going to get smoked. Yeah, and uh, I mean that that's my goal. You know, it's just to call in a mature time and and put one in the bag. My uh, father-in-law is coming down this weekend so we can scout a couple fields and and maybe something will change my mind. You know, you never know. Maybe we'll pick a different spot, but I I think I got a a good read on two farms and uh, we'll flip a coin that day, I guess. Yeah. So you guys can take what it's a draw for a tag for you. Not a draw. You can get it um, over the counter. Right. But I'm just going to throw this number out there. I don't know how close I am. But in the lower half of Michigan, they have something where it's private land tags, and then you have the first season, second season. So on that private land tag that I have the other day, which blows my mind, there was 52,000 tags left over, and we're only allowed one bird. So sadly, if I shoot my bird Monday, I can't go back to the store and say how many tags are left. Oh, 49,000. I can't. I can't take another tag. So I don't understand how you have a quota, don't sell out the quota, but that's the way they do it. So it's over the counter. It's first come, first serve until that quota is gone. I got you. And you guys shoot Easterns up there? Yeah, they're Easterns. Yep. Okay. Now, there is Baker different season for public land, and there's different times and seasons for, you know, the upper half and the UP. So I'm just explaining, you know, my situation, lower lower half private land. So, so interesting about Washington State is we have a Washington slam because we have Merriam's, Easterns, and Rio's in the state. No so, way. I didn't know that. Yep, yep. Uh, and they're in different parts of the state. So eastern is Merriam's, and then in southern Washington you have um, you have uh, easterns, and then in the central part of the state uh, there's some rios up there. So, like, it is possible to get three species in, 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 uh, in one season here. And you get three tags, right? And that's what yeah. you said? Mm-hmm. So you could use a tag for each species then? Correct. And how long is your season? I mean, is that is that logistically is that possible? The, oh yeah, April fifteenth to the end of May. So, I mean, it's you could go. I mean, you could yeah. It, it's just it'd be some driving because everything's. I mean, you're you could go down to Southern Washington, get you an Eastern, then go over to Eastern Washington and get uh, a Merriam, and then scoot up to North Central. And I think the Rios, in my opinion, from what I have learned, is the Rios are, are the hardest to locate just because there's less of them. So, yeah, you could definitely do it in a season. That'd be cool. Uh, maybe I'll try that next year. Definitely would, man. Keep me updated on that. That's That would be a, a neat little, you know, accomplishment to, to be had yep. for sure. A Washington slam and then scoot down to Florida. Yeah, all I need to complete my slam is uh, I need to get a, a Rio and a uh, – and a Merriam, and then I've got my slam. Now, in Nebraska, I've actually shot a Eastern and Merriman hybrid bird. I don't know oh, if really? you've ever heard of that. Yeah. Where yeah. in Nebraska? That was in southeast Nebraska. Yeah. Okay. So, See, so, yeah, we hunted uh, in Broken Bow um, the year before last, and that was a really good time. That's, I'm a big fan of that area. It's a lot of fun over there. I mean, there's yeah, just there's birds everywhere. You ride down the road and just see them on the side of the road, like in fields. Yeah, it's crazy. Broken Bow is a really cool town and, and very cool country right in there. Uh, yep. As you probably got to see, Baker, you would just pull in from whatever road, and you would see what looks like just, I don't know what you call them, sand hills or whatever. And then once you get in there, it's like all these canon, canyons. It's crazy. Yep. Really Very interesting neat. topography in that state. Yeah, it's unreal. I, I'm a huge Nebraska fan. I love it. I'd I'd live there in a heartbeat if I could. Love Nebraska. Yep. So, um, what so is, you're gonna you're gonna go after your bird on Monday? When? How long do you think yep. it'll take you to get him? 
man, I would love to be done by 9 a.m., and I think I have a good chance of doing that. So first day, you can, you can close the deal. I'm pretty pretty confident, pretty confident, unless, you know, I screw up somehow. But otherwise, I'm pretty confident. Um, I have one farm that historically every year, the I'm the only one turkey hunting it, I'll put it that way. So they may give me the run around, but it's just being there in – and hunting, and if I hunt long enough, I'm going to shoot one. Right, I got you. And do you hunt out of a blind or on the ground? You know, um, I do a little of both, you know, but lots of times I hunt on the ground, you know. I haven't, uh, there's something about, to me, because I do so much deer hunting, that sitting, sitting on a bird for that long drives me nuts. I've, it's my moment to kind of do a little western, you know, um, run and gun. You right. Know? So I really like to kind of, I, I guess I'm an impatient turkey hunter. I probably have blown more opportunities, you know, without even knowing it. I'm sure I have. But I, I'm a guy that I'll I'll belly crawl if I have to to get 10 yards from one to shoot one. I just, right. I like to get. I like to get behind them and, and uh, close the gap on them and, and practice my stalking skills, so to speak, even though right. it's hard. But that's what I like to do. I so. gotcha. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm ready for Friday to get here. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm uh, I'm ready too, man. I'm ready. I'm going to um, – actually, tomorrow morning I'm going to go out and do another little morning of uh, scouting just to see, you know, hopefully – make sure I'm on top of what I've thought I've been on top of and uh, make sure these birds are flying down on my side of the property. And uh, I don't know, just exciting. It's that time of year, man. It's awesome. Yeah, I love the spring. So what else is going on in your world? Well, uh, hopefully a whole bunch here shortly, you know, but uh, (laughs) right now. Top secret. (laughs) Top secret, but. Right now, you know, like right before you called, I just had a delivery to the gym, and I'm just, you know, doing that stuff, just taking care of business. So. All right. Well, cool, man. Well, what is uh, uh, what's, what's going on with Kill Cliff? Anything Nothing exciting just, you want to share? No, working, growing, you know, just kind of getting after it and, you know, same old, same old, staying busy and, you know, trying to make the right decisions and good business decisions and all that stuff. And idle hands do the devil's work, so, you know, got to stay busy. That's right, man. Well, uh, as always, Baker, man, I really appreciate your time today, and, and uh, thanks for coming on, man. It's it's nice to hear somebody just excited to go hunting. Yeah, and then, yeah, we'll follow, I'll follow up with you uh, after next weekend. You know, hopefully I'll have some good stories to share. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do a follow-up, and uh, we'll kind of get to celebrate, hopefully, your success. Cool, man. Well, I'll talk to you soon, and thanks for having me. Not a problem. Thanks again, Baker. And uh, guys and girls, as you know, we are live every Tuesday on the Outdoor Podcast channel, podbros.com, and the show will drop on iTunes the same day as well. Make sure you leave us a five-star review. And uh, if you're not following Baker, make sure you do. He's he's hilarious and awesome guy. So thanks again, Baker. All right, have a good one. See ya.